What's going on guys, Rob Plays here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about Advanced Look Controls, ALCs. People play ALCs because they're the best way to take control over your right stick and fine tune your controls to your specific needs. Throughout the video I'm going to be referencing Reddit user Vivid Nightmares ALC post, it's the best and most objective ALC breakdown I've seen on the site, and if you're unclear about any topic I go over, check out that post, I'll drop a link in the description. Let's get into it. The first thing you're going to want to do when switching to ALCs is to convert your sense. On screen are the ALC to non-ALC conversion values that this Reddit user mined from the game files. These are straight from the game files, so there's no better source or chart online. To convert your sense, scroll down and start with your yaw and pitch speed. Let's say you play on 4-3, go to the look sensitivity chart and copy the values from the 4 row. To get them to the exact numbers from the chart, I recommend turning these settings all the way down, then tuning the dials with your D-pad. After you've completed this, convert your ADS sense. This time you'll go to the look sensitivity zoomed chart, and go to the 3 row, then copy those values. From there, set your response curve to 0 if you play on linear, and 10 if you play on classic. Leave all the other settings untouched, and you've essentially converted your sense. But we won't stop there. Let's take a look at what each setting means and make changes for your needs and playstyle. Dead zone is the percentage of the right stick's full range motion that you have to travel for the game to register that you've started to move the right stick and begin making your character rotate. If I have a dead zone of 0%, the moment I start to move the right stick, my character starts to rotate. That is, except for stick drift. If I instead set my dead zone to 50%, my character won't start to rotate until I have pushed the stick past 50% of its full range of motion. Most guides recommend you raise your dead zone a few percent at a time until you have no stick drift, but the problem with this is that the worst effects of stick drift are psychological. It doesn't really impact your aim. Having a high dead zone, however, will notably worsen your aim, decreasing your ability to make fine micro adjustments like those needed for recoil control and long range tracking. For this reason, I usually recommend finding a setting where you only have a slight stick drift, then getting a new controller when it starts to bother you too much. Vivid Nightmare even recommends always keeping your dead zone at 0%, and if you want full control over your controller, this is the right move. Outer Threshold is the opposite of a dead zone. It is the percentage from the stick's end range of motion at which the game will register that you've pushed the stick all the way to one side. If on your settings you push the stick all the way to one side, and it makes your character spin 360 degrees per second, raising your outer threshold to 30% will make it so you only have to push your stick 70% of the way to one side to spin that same 360 degrees per second. I recommend you keep this at the lowest value, 1%. Any amount you raise this will artificially raise your sensitivity because it scrunches all of your settings rotational values into a shorter range of motion. Unless you have some kind of unusual need, it's best to just keep this at 1%. Response curve is something I went over extensively in my linear vs classic video, so if you want a much more detailed explanation, go check that out. ALCs let you fine tune this response curve. Check out this visual here for some guidance. To follow it, input if you came from linear or classic, and if you're very accurate or generally inaccurate. If you play on linear and are a very accurate player, play on zero response curve. You'd only come to ALCs to fine tune sense or extra yaw. If you play on linear and you're not as accurate as you'd like to be, playing linear might be hurting your accuracy. Choose a number between 0 and 10 for your response curve and stick to it for a few weeks without changing. Lots of these players switch to classic for example and see a massive improvement in their gameplay. Next, if you play on classic and you're very accurate, consider choosing a response curve between 0 and 10 to gain some of the micro adjustment benefits, let's say 6 or 7, and stick to it for a few weeks without changing. And last, if you play on Classic and you're pretty inaccurate, you shouldn't switch to ALCs at this stage of the game. It's possible to become very accurate without ALCs, so get that down first and once you identify a specific issue ALCs will solve for you, make the switch. Next we'll talk about yaw and pitch. 
yaw is your horizontal rotation speed and pitch is your vertical rotation speed. ADS yaw and ADS pitch are the same things just for when you're aiming down sights. If you ever wish there were smaller jumps between settings, let's say a middle ground between 4-4 and 5-4, this is where you should make changes. First we'll talk about yaw. Don't get caught up changing this all day, you'll throw your shot off. Pick a middle ground setting between what you used to play and the next setting up or down and stick to it. Make jumps in units of 10. For pitch, what's good to know is that one of the things that makes Classic such a user-friendly response curve is that it has a higher yaw than pitch. That is, on Classic, your horizontal rotation speed is faster than your vertical rotation speed. This is helpful for two reasons. One, the vast majority of the enemies you track aren't going to make rapid vertical changes in position. As long as you can track enemies in horizon queues or on jump towers, your pitch speed is fast enough. And two, it prevents players from fighting against themselves. On linear, lots of players will accidentally over adjust or under adjust vertically when they're trying to track horizontally, whereas having their pitch a little lower would have kept them on target. If your sense is too slow for vertical tracking, you can either bring this up a little bit or hold on tight and I'll explain other settings that can help. The other settings are extra yaw, extra pitch, ramp up time, and ramp up delay. These will add extra rotation speed when you're at the stick's end range of motion. With the minimum outer threshold, 1%, this is when you hold your stick against the outer ring or bumper. When you hold it here, your rotation speed will not start to ramp up until your ramp up delay time has passed, then it will gradually ramp up for the duration of the ramp up time until your rotation speed has hit your extra yaw or pitch speed. You have more leeway with your turning settings because in normal hipfire tracking, you will never have your stick up against the outer ring. Add a little extra yaw or pitch here if you want to make snappier turns when you're looting or run away from enemies. It won't really help you play the game, but it has a nice tactile sensation to it. With your ADS settings, you have to be a little bit more careful, however. ADS pitch and yaw being slower than hipfire means to track fast enemies, you'll sometimes jam your stick against the outside ring and if you add extra pitch or yaw, the sudden unexpected speedup will make you whiff your shots terribly. My recommendation, add a little extra yaw, a short delay if any, and a more gradual ramp up time, and if you're missing shots because it's causing you to over adjust, then turn ADS extra yaw and pitch back down to zero. For reference, on screen are my ALC settings. What I did is I converted 4-4 Classic to ALCs, I turned down the response curve a little bit to approach linear, I added turning extra yaw and pitch for snappier movement tech, and a touch of ADS extra yaw and pitch with no delay, and a slow ramp up for a quick ADS tracking speed. Give these a try if you want. So that's the video. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe for more Apex educational content. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!